We have one more thing. This is a bit of an unusual video for me and an unusual topic given the videos that I have been uploading thus far, but it is something I have an interest in and I thought, you know, maybe my personal journey with the Apple Watch and other health and fitness trackers might be of interest to someone else. As the name of this video suggests, I recently purchased a Series 8 Apple Watch Hermes edition to replace an Aura ring that I've been wearing for six months now. The Apple Watch cost just over $1,300 US, which is a lot of money, especially for something that could have been a lot cheaper had I avoided the Hermes moniker. With this video, I just want to explain the reason for the purchase and what other devices I was considering. The video is broken into chapters, which you can find in the video description. Uh, well, assuming I remember to add them. Uh, the first is a look back at my past Apple Watches. It is the next chapter in Apple's story. And here it is. The Series 8 is not the first Apple Watch I've owned, but it is the first Hermes edition. I purchased the very first Apple Watch, which I think is considered Series 0 now, or Generation 1, and that was back in 2015. I then upgraded to Series 2 in 2017 because it was the first to include a GPS receiver and I desperately wanted to map my outdoor activities without having to carry my iPhone. And finally, I got the first iteration of the Series SE in 2021. My primary reason for owning an Apple Watch is for the fitness tracking abilities. Beyond that, I barely, if ever, use any of the other features. I am someone who is quite active and I enjoy tracking those activities and my health metrics. Hence, I really enjoyed having an Apple Watch. I wore it daily and I was addicted to closing those rings and earning the awards. But that changed in 2022. What originally drew me to the Apple Watch, its ability to motivate me to stay active, no longer had any effect on me. I'm not sure if it was just a positive result of owning the Apple Watch over these years, uh, but staying active had simply become a habit. I no longer cared if I was closing rings or earning awards, I would just do my workouts regardless. I had become self-motivated to stay active, which was great, but it made me question, you know, why own an Apple Watch? When you take away the one quality of the device that I wore it for, I realized the truth of it. I didn't really like wearing it. It was obstructive during some of my daily activities, it was distracting, and I felt that it looked out of place in more formal settings, such as while in the office, so I stopped wearing it. Eventually, however, I had an itch, an itch to see my health data again. I missed it. Not the rings or the awards, just the metrics, like what was my peak heart rate during that last run? But I didn't want another Apple Watch, I wanted something smaller, less obstructive, and less distracting. Introducing the Aura Ring. In late 2022, I purchased the third generation of the Aura Ring. It wasn't an impulsive purchase, I spent months researching it, and my conclusion was that it's essentially an Apple Watch in ring form but with some added benefits. Honestly, it sounded perfect at the time. All the usual health metrics, but in a small, less obstructive and less distracting package. The only negative was the essentially mandatory monthly subscription of $6. However, I got six months for free when I purchased the Aura Ring and I figured I would try it for those six months and then decide if I wanted to continue paying for the monthly fee. So that's what I did. I actually really enjoyed using the Aura Ring. It took a few weeks to get used to wearing it every day, but eventually it just vanished from perception, which was exactly what I wanted. However, I quickly learned that it had one major drawback, aside from the monthly subscription, and it was rather significant for me, and that was the poor support for workout tracking. 
I knew going in that while the Aura Ring was better than a lot of other health trackers when it came to offering advice on how to improve one's health, it lacked greatly in the workout tracking area. I initially thought this wouldn't bother me too much, but it did. In fact, I came to realize that workout tracking is the most important aspect of a health and fitness tracker for me personally. And there was one other concern which almost seems ridiculous for me to mention, but it was the ring itself as an accessory for men. I just didn't like it. And since COVID ended, I've been going into the office a lot more, and while I don't put on a suit every day, I do like to dress business casual, and I've noticed a lack of accessories in my attire. I know, it, it sort of sounds ridiculous, but my outfits just feel incomplete without some sort of professional looking timepiece, which I don't actually own. Uh, this resulted in a bit of a fall down the rabbit hole that is men's watches, which eventually led me to the discovery and interest in Withings. I had a health tracking device, the Aura Ring, but I really wanted a semi-formal looking timepiece for the office. Initially, I thought the best solution would be to keep the Aura Ring and get a cheap non-smart watch. Then I'd have my health tracker on my ring and my business casual accessory, my watch, on my wrist. But I remembered how much I missed reliable workout tracking with the Aura Ring, so once again I started looking into smartwatches, which eventually led to the Withings scan watch. The scan watch is a beautiful looking smartwatch that would look right at place in an office setting. Plus, even though it is technically a smartwatch, it likely wouldn't be as distracting as something like an Apple Watch because it doesn't have a large screen to promote constant interaction or receive a plethora of notifications. In short, it looked perfect, exactly what I was looking for. But like usual, eventually I found something that turned me off of it. Like the Aura Ring, the scan watch has so many great positives but it has one big negative that concerned me, the accuracy. Rob, also known as the Quantified Scientist, has this excellent YouTube channel where he measures and compares the accuracy of health metrics captured by various consumer grade health trackers. And of course, he's looked at the Withings scan watch. In summary, its health metrics are not that accurate, especially for workout tracking, which of course is the most important aspect for me. This knowledge completely turned me off of the Withing Scan Watch. I mean, it looked great and it checked so many other boxes, but if it isn't accurate for fitness tracking, I just didn't see it satisfying my needs. And interestingly, the Apple Watches are by far the most accurate devices per Rob's testing. So I didn't really know what to do. I desperately wanted the aesthetics of the Withing scan watch with the accuracy and dependability of the Apple watch, but that device doesn't exist currently. And this conundrum of sorts started me down a new path, a compromising path, but an expensive compromising path. And so we come to the conclusion of my journey and the answer to the conundrum the Apple Watch Series 8 Hermes Edition, a $1,300 smartwatch to replace my Aura Ring. But why? Why did I select this watch? Well, if I had to order what was most important for me in a health and fitness tracker, it would look like this. First, accurate health metrics, especially during workouts. Second, the device is unobtrusive and non-obstructing. And third, it can be paired with a suit without looking out of place. Now, to consider the Apple Watch with respect to those qualities. The Apple Watch is one of the most accurate consumer-grade health and fitness trackers, so that is a huge check. But as for being unobtrusive and non-obstructing, well, there isn't much I can do about that, aside from turning off all the notifications, which I normally do anyways. I am hoping with future iterations of the watch that Apple at least tries to slim down the profile and make it more inconspicuous for those who prefer that. And finally, regarding the aesthetics of the Apple Watch, 
Personally, I don't think it looks that good in an office setting or in an even more formal setting. It's like wearing a calculator watch just without the buttons. It just doesn't have that mechanical, timeless, formal appeal. But you know, maybe there is a way to make it appear more formal. At least that was what my thoughts were when I was once more considering purchasing a new Apple Watch. I tried various configurations on Apple's website, different models, different finishes, different bands. Some combinations certainly looked better than others, but they still didn't look formal or even semi-formal. I considered looking for third-party bands, but I didn't really know where to begin. And that was when the Apple Watch Hermes option caught my attention. I knew the Hermes editions were an option, but I largely ignored them due to the price. Even though the bands looked much closer to what I was looking for, and they actually looked quite nice with the Apple Watch, I wasn't willing to spend an extra three, four, five hundred dollars on just a special band. Or rather, I didn't think I was. But the more I looked at them, and the more I watched videos on them, and the more I learned about Hermes, the more intrigued I became and the less turned off by the price I was. It began to feel like a sort of investment, not just in a piece of tech, but in something greater. An investment in an expression and in myself. So I pulled the trigger and purchased the Apple Watch Series 8 Hermes Edition with the gold single tour leather band. I'll throw up a quick unboxing of it now. Sorry about the uh, video quality. I don't really have the best of setups for unboxing-like content, but I'll include some stock images from Hermes's website as well so you have a better idea of what the watch looks like under optimal lighting. Also, I know the Apple Watch screen in some of these clips that I'm showing is upside down. Uh, that's just because I intend to wear the watch in that format where it's on my left arm with the crown facing to the left, which is sort of unusual. I think a lot of people prefer the crown on the right, but I prefer it on the left because it doesn't get bumped by uh, gloves or anything else that might be on my hand. Um, but in these clips, it's showing the screen upside down because the screen is locked in that orientation during setup. The unboxing experience was a bit underwhelming, if I'm being honest. I knew what to expect because I watched other unboxings of the Hermes Edition Apple Watch, but I thought my own unboxing would elicit more exciting feelings. It, it didn't. Um, it's more exciting than a standard Apple Watch, you know, that's for sure, but uh, not much more so. I was also somewhat underwhelmed by the Hermes band. It is a beautiful leather product, there's no doubt about that, but for over $300, I was expecting more somehow. I'm not sure how, but I was. I think I just need to wear it for a while to really begin to respect it. I do appreciate that Apple and Hermes included a standard Apple Watch band, uh, like the fitness one, uh, in Hermes on brand orange, which will be perfect for working out. The Hermes single tour band does feel great on the wrist and the leather is very soft and it will probably get even more comfortable as time progresses. And the whole package looks much more premium than my past Apple watches. And I think a lot of that is due to the polished stainless steel finish, which has a much more formal appearance than the aluminum models, like all of my past Apple watches had. At this point, I'm not exactly sure if I'm happy with the purchase, but I am looking forward to getting it set up with one of the classy Hermes watch faces and wearing it to the office to see how it feels. That will certainly be the real test for me. And now to simply summarize this long-winded journey. I've owned several Apple Watches over the years, largely for the activity tracking functionality, but I lost interest in wearing one in 2022 because I no longer required them to stay motivated to be active. I was just active regardless. I also didn't really like the aesthetics of the Apple Watch, or at least the ones that I previously owned, especially in a more formal setting. However, within a year of not wearing a smartwatch, I started missing the health and fitness metrics. I didn't want another Apple Watch. I was looking for something smaller, less obstructive, less obtrusive, less distracting, less all of this stuff. So I purchased an Aura Ring. 
But after wearing it daily for six months, I didn't like how awful it was at tracking my workouts, and I began feeling like I should be wearing some sort of timepiece to work because it would better complete my business casual outfits. I considered getting a Withing scan watch because, in my opinion, they look very classy, especially for a smartwatch, but after watching the Quantified Scientist review of it and learning of its inaccuracies compared to other health trackers, I was immediately turned off. I did, however, end up learning that the Apple Watches are some of the most accurate health trackers, especially for workouts. I began looking at getting a new Apple Watch again, but I was once more unimpressed with the aesthetics of it, especially the base models in aluminum, which were the only ones I had ever owned. I was about to give up in my search when the Hermes editions caught my eye. The premium price was a bit off-putting, but I eventually convinced myself to give it a try. Hence, I am now the owner of a Series 8 Apple Watch Hermes edition. I hope this journey is of interest or helpful to someone else considering one of these wearables. Everybody's preferences and needs are different, but given mine, that being an accurate and reliable fitness tracker, while also being somewhat classy and unobtrusive, I think I made the best choice given today's options. And that's it for this one. Thanks for watching and hopefully I'll see you again next time.